Hey everyone and welcome to part 8 of creating a C-Sharp RPG game. So in this tutorial we're going to be setting up a basic auto attack system. So usually in MMORPG games when we select an enemy um, we usually left click to just select them without attacking or if we right click it usually enables some kind of melee auto attack mode depending on if the player is actually in range and facing the enemy. Now during the auto attack mode it doesn't cost anything, um, any mana or energy or any stat usually. And um, every few seconds, it will just do an auto attack at the enemy. So this is something that usually happens when you know your normal attacks are on cooldown, if you still want your player to be attacking an enemy or not. So uh, it'll be pretty easy to set this up. I'm just going to go down here. So we're going to be using these two variables. One is going to be the actual cooldown uh, time that we want for our auto attack. So if you want it to be like two or three seconds, uh, depending, some people just have, you know, just a global setting. Um, in this case, you could change it if you wanted to. So maybe give the player a debuff uh, so they can't auto attack after that certain amount of time. It just gives a little more flexibility to add this in. Or if you want it to be a standard default number, you don't even have to use this variable. You can just type it in. Uh, but anyways, uh, the auto attack current time is what we're going to be using to keep track of what time that cooldown is at until we want to attack again. So we're going to be timesing this by time.delta time and calculating it that way. So we're going to go down here and we can just add in a just an auto attack and we can say if actually let's see here we're just going to be using this code so because we want to make sure that when we are doing this attack that we're still facing and within distance for the attack so the next thing we need to do is add another if statement and we actually want to go up here and grab the current time paste that in there and we want our attack cooldown time. So we're going to say if this is less than that, then what we want to do is we want to take auto attack current time, paste that in there, plus equals, and then time that delta time. So while this is less than our cooldown time, this number is going to go up. And as soon as it gets to the amount that we want, we'll do an else statement. And for simplicity, um, we're just going to be using our basic attack function. You could have a separate function for this. We probably will because this basic attack would be just, you know, our special ability like attack one, attack two, attack three. Uh, so we could make something separate for this in the future. I'll probably end up changing up this ability something else and get rid of the basic attack for that but for now we're just going to be using basic attack for testing to see if it actually works and then we want to go and we want to take our auto attack time so we're going to call this once and we want this to reset okay so after this is greater than our cooldown time we want to jump to the else statement, attack, and then reset this so it goes in a loop. We can save that real quick. Now we can jump in the game and go test this. I'm not going to press uh, any of my attacks, my keybinds, and we're going to see if this works. I'll step back a little bit. And, okay, that did that really fast. Oh, I know what we did wrong. We forgot to actually go in and set that cooldown time, so we're going to set it for three seconds. So we'll jump back in here, step back, select the enemy. And as you can see, the cooldown time over here, it's counting up to three, and then it's resetting down to zero and going again. And as you see, the health is set to 60. As soon as we step back, it stops counting down. Step forward, it gets back into the rhythm. Another thing that we can do for this, or that we're gonna wanna do for this, is check what we actually selected here. 
So there's a couple of different things we can do. I'm just going to do this real quick. We'll probably end up changing this in the future. So we're going to say um, either left or right, and we're going to set a int for this value for selected. So int, uh, we can just do something like selected num, something basic like that. And in here, we can set this to either 0 or 1. And what we can do from here is if selected num, actually we probably want to recast. We want to make sure that we hit an enemy first before then. So if selected num equals, equals 0, we could do an else, but we'll just do else if for now. equals equals one. And for this, we want to either, we could enable or disable an auto attack feature. So let's see here. Um, yeah. So we'll have to add in uh, one more variable to this. Public bool uh, can auto attack. So that's just a basic variable that we can use in here. And so if it's zero, it's going to be left click. So can auto attack equals false. Else if attack equals true. Now we're also going to add this into, let's see here, into here as well. So if we are attacking, if we finally did an attack, we're going to enable auto attack here as well. So we're going to save that. Jump back in the game. I'm going to select it with left click. Let's see here. Auto attack. And we forgot to add in this and can attack equals true. So now we're going to left click again. You see that the timer has not started. Now let's see if I right click. Yep. Now it enables and starts counting down. We're going to jump back out here. We're going to left click and we're going to press 1 to attack and that also starts our timer. So it's a simple way of implementing an auto attack system. You see it's very basic to set up. Uh, we could add a lot more into this so that the auto attack current time resets to 0 and a couple of other things but that is a basic way to get that set up. Also another thing that we have to implement is being able to click off of the enemy. Right now we just keep the enemy selected at all times. Um, we're going to be adding in a way to just unclick from them or a way to disable the auto attack. So yeah, that's it for this tutorial. Stay tuned for the next part in the C Sharp RPG series.